What's going on guys? It's Mike for Sim Racing 604 and this is the Moza Racing R9 wheelbase. This is the newest entry in what you might call the entry level direct drive sim racing market. It's got a lot of great features and if you're looking for value, this might just be the best cost versus peak torque ratio we have in the sim racing market right now. So I'm excited to try this out. I'm going to get it unboxed, try it out, give you my thoughts. Let's do this. All right, guys, so as mentioned, this is the Moza Racing R9 direct drive wheelbase. It's got uh, nine newton meters of torque. Uh, it's made of airplane grade aluminum. It's got uh, wireless power supply for the wheel and app control. It's got a lot of great features. And once we get it unboxed, you're gonna see similarities to a certain other wheelbase on the market, which I own. So uh, we can do a little comparison there. So let's go ahead and get this open, guys. Very small, very simple box. Good for shipping, especially in this day and age. Why is that not cutting? There we go. And mercifully, we have the top open. Let's see what we have in here. Aha, stickers and what looks to be a user manual. Then we have a power supply. This is a US, it's got, looks like it has an inline switch. Well, we can go ahead and open that up actually. Ah, I'll save it for a second. And I suspect this is a USB cable. And I suspect I am right. And then in this bag, come on you, come on you. Very tightly packed in there. This is the wheelbase of course I'm trying to free up. And finally I have, so let's get this out then we'll get the box out of the way. Okay, so that went about as awkwardly as I could possibly imagine. So before we get the wheelbase open, let's just uh, recap what we've opened up here. So we have a USB cable. Very simple, not braided. I prefer the braided, but that's all right. And then we have the wall to brick cord. And uh, as I was trying to explain, I'll go ahead and get this opened up here. As I was trying to explain, it has an inline switch here to cut power to the wheelbase. And it's kind of right in the middle of the cord. My preference, honestly, is if this inline switch, I like the idea of the inline switch, but my preference would be that it's a lot closer to the brick. The closer you get it to the wheelbase, the better, in my opinion. But regardless, actually, I don't want to put that aside. We'll put that here. And then we have the power brick itself. So pretty standard. Let's see what the power uh, input 110 to 240 output, uh, 36 volt, 5 amp, 180 watt. Uh, let's see, AC. Yeah, I believe it's 36 volt AC output on this. So it's got, it's plastic capped right now, but it's got this, or does that stay on? Yeah, sorry, that stays on and we'll plug directly into the back of the wheelbase. So let's open this beauty up. And first thing I notice is it's not that heavy. It's a fairly light unit. Wow, tiny little thing. <laughs> That's impressive. That's impressive. Um, I have to admit when I saw pictures, I wasn't too enthused about the general brick shape of this Moza racing wheel, um, but it's so small. It's so small. Like you can see it hopefully compared to the size of my hand. I'll get you guys some measurements on screen in a second. 
and uh, you can kind of see how big this is, but uh, it's comparatively tiny. So on the back, I'll get you guys closer pictures of this, but uh, meter, not sure what that does. There's an e-stop, there's a USB in, power in, and then a power button on the back, which I wish, which I wish uh, depressed and latched, but uh, it doesn't. Just a simple toggle. And then up front, this is uh, the quick release. Nice looking wireless quick release. So yeah, impressively small. So um, yeah, I guess nothing much else to look at. One thing I didn't see so far. Okay, so the mounting holes are on the bottom of this. Just four holes here. Hopefully that lines up with my uh, wheel deck on my FGT Elite. But yeah, uh, oh, there is a little tested sticker on the front of this wheelbase, by the way. So good to know that it was checked at the factory. But uh, yeah, really, the first thing you notice is the size. It's it's really tiny, and uh, it's impressive that they've packed all that in here. So um, looks good so far. Again, I would rather have this uh, on-off switch a little bit closer to the base, a little more accessible, but that's fine. Uh, USB cable, I prefer braided, but that's fine as well. So overall, very good impressions so far. Um, yeah, so I guess there's nothing left to do. I'm going to take some pictures. I'll show you guys some facts about the Moza Racing R9. Then I'm going to get it mounted and tested. And you guys are just going to have to pretend like you don't see the wheel because I'm going to do the wheel review in a second video. Uh, but for now, my focus is getting up and running with this wheelbase and testing it out. All right, so a quick rundown of the features of the Moza Racing R9 wheelbase. This wheelbase uses a compact servo direct drive motor to produce up to nine newton meters of torque to the shaft. The housing of the R9 is made of aircraft grade aluminum alloy. The R9 uses a smart cooling system and built-in temperature sensors to offer no fan noise while still keeping the unit cool to the touch even under heavy use. The wheelbase connects to Moza Racing wheels using wireless zero latency technology. It offers unlimited steering angle but presets for GT performance formula cart drift and rally driving are available via the free pit house software in addition to the pit house software Moza racing also offers a free smartphone app which allows you to control nearly all parameters of the force feedback the same way you would in the software without having to switch applications on your computer the wheelbase is compatible with PC only and connects to your PC via a USB connection the wheelbase measures 240 by 157 by 124 millimeters and can be directly mounted to a wheelbase plate on a cockpit or optionally Moza Racing does offer a table clamp and side mount bracket. The wheelbase can also accommodate direct connections to Moza Racing digital dash display or CRP pedals. The Moza Racing R9 wheelbase is currently priced at 439 US dollars. Okay, so I have the R9 mounted now and uh, went on no problem. There's three threaded holes on the bottom of the R9, and, or sorry, four threaded holes. How about an even number? Four threaded holes on the bottom of the R9 uh, lined up perfectly with the holes on this uh, base plate. And at first I was like, oh no, I don't have the right size bolts. But uh, Moza did include bolts and an Allen key in the box. I just missed it during the unboxing, but they were in there. So shout out to Moza on that. I love when manufacturers include uh, the right bolts and even a, an accessory to get them tightened so that's great so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the on switch here and hopefully oh I know power on the back of the unit there we go Windows sees it getting a little light on the wheelbase uh, PC needs to restart all right, so I will restart and then uh, we'll try this again, but it looks like it's setting up the Moza R9 base now. It's off camera, but I am getting a signal from Windows. All right, Moza R9 base is set up and ready to go. I'm gonna try and restart and then get the uh, software downloaded and uh, see if I can get the uh, R9 configured. All right, so mozaracing.com slash downloads brings you to this page where as you can see, uh, there's a bunch of installers, a bunch of user manuals, so nice and convenient to have that all in one spot. I've gone ahead and done the installation of the Pit House software, and that has brought me here. So I can adjust my limit and steering angle, and right now I've got it set to 540, but it's just a simple, or I can use these presets. So I'm going to go with GT, oh, I see, 360 for formula. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. 
And then we can go to the wheelbase. I haven't plugged the wheel in yet. So let's see, there are different presets. I love this, I love this. Uh, I think more software should have this, frankly. I'm gonna go with GT, GT seems to be the way to go with the wheel I have at this point. We can go into advanced settings. I'm not gonna mess with this for now. Damping. I wonder if this is adjusted with the type of uh, preset you go with. So 25, 100, 90. Yes, indeed. Okay, so it looks like the GT performance formula, cart, drift, and rally settings affect the settings globally. And you can have, wow, that's really cool. Okay, so you can make adjustments here to the percentage of the different frequencies and it describes what the frequencies will be used for ABS vibration. Oh, very interesting, very interesting. Okay, and then you set a percentage up to 500% so you can exaggerate some effects if you want. So really neat, well done, well done Moza, I like this. But again, I'm just gonna keep it at the default GT. I'm gonna say save, whoops, I guess you can save custom profiles. That is pretty amazing. And I import, obviously you can share settings. Wow, very impressive software. I really like this. I really, really like this. So that's cool. So this is the Moza Pit House software. Well done guys. So um, yeah, uh, next thing I'm gonna do this away from camera, but I'm going to plug in my wheel because of course nothing's plugged into it right now. Get the wheel plugged in, get this thing on track. Ooh, look at this. You can launch games through here. Uh, I can configure it looks like. Loving it, loving it so far. All right, all right, enough excitement. Let's get this thing on track. All right, guys, so here we are in a set of course of competizione. Got the R9 fired up here, ready to go, all configured. No issues with configuration whatsoever. The rotation was set up just fine. So I've had some time to play around with uh, this sim. I also tried AMS 2 and I have to tell you that I'm really, really impressed with the level of detail that's available here. I'm using the uh, GT setup, of course, within the software. And I turned up the curb detail just so I could sense more of what the wheel is trying to put forward as far as force feedback forces. And uh, it's just an incredibly detailed experience. Like right now, just these very subtle, subtle rumbles as I uh, come along the road. And then when I go over a curb like this, it's a much more pronounced vibration and just really feeling fantastic. So much detail, lots of strength as well. I'm running 80% in the software and 60% in game. So there's a fair bit of headroom there. And honestly, this is stronger than I would normally run my force feedback in ACC. Uh, but just want to get a real good sense of those force feedback forces. And as I told you guys off the start, just very, very impressed. And the configuration in the software was so easy. I just dragged a couple sliders up. I think I made the curb detail at 80 kilometers an hour and 160 kilometers an hour. I believe I made it 150% instead of 100%. And, um, yeah, it, it just really feels great. No signs of clipping. Not even close, in fact. And again, that curb detail, just so pronounced, so well done. And having those subtleties as you drive along. Again, it's just, I don't know if I can show you guys with the wheel or not. You can kind of maybe see that little bit of vibration there. That's actually the road detail. And it's translating that nicely. And also, if I miss a corner and have to slam on the brakes, this is a bad scenario. But let's say I lock these brakes up, start an ABS right off. Translates that chatter really nicely. I mean, I went off in the grass there. Let's try this again. So it goes numb, and then you get that chatter 
as it's skidding across the grass and the gravel. And now, of course, I have flat-spotted tires, so you guys can see with that wheel. And you just see how fast those forces are coming through. It's, it's like immediate. It's really, really nicely done here. Again, turned up way too high. This is a fight with these flat-spotted tires. Let's try this one more time. Yeah, yeah, that was it. So you get that numbness at first, and then as it starts to slow, you get the chatter of the tires across the road surface. I was getting it on grass and gravel before, but uh, now getting it on the tarmac. One more time. Yeah, so nice, so nicely done. Let me give myself a fighting chance here. So yeah, it's so quick. Those forces, those rotational forces are just so fast, so well detailed. My whole body is shaking <laughs> with these terrible tires. But regardless, I am getting the forces. Uh, my uh, front tires are cooked, that's why you guys can't see it. My HUD's on the third screen. But the front tires are absolutely cooked, so I'm getting all kinds of vibration. This is actually a great test of force feedback, not in hopefully your day-to-day -day racing, but of uh, what this wheel is really capable of. And again, oh, those big bumps, those sausage curbs on the inside there really translating nicely. Tires are slowly getting down to temperature again. But yeah, my whole body is shaking right now by dint of the force of this wheel. So that nine Newton meters, and I, I mentioned this in the previous video, I know a lot of people think, you know, 20 Newton meters and up is the only way to go for force feedback. I don't personally agree with that. I think there's a lot that can be done with lower uh, Newton meter count wheels and uh, yeah this is just kind of becoming silly at this point but I can still feel that force feedback detail even with all of this going on with the flat spotted tires as I go over a curb such as this I can still feel that rumble so it's amazing the amount of headroom this wheel has to play with I'm being you know thrown around effectively by this wheel by the strong forces and it can still produce those curb details so yeah, just really uh, not enough good things to say about this uh, wheelbase. It feels tremendous. All right guys, so time to wrap things up with this video. I'm gonna go back to the table, give you guys my final thoughts on the Moza Racing R9 wheelbase. All right, so final thoughts on the Moza Racing R9 wheelbase. And as you can probably deduce by the costume change, I've had this for multiple days, really done my best to put it through its paces. And so I'm gonna tell you about the pros and cons that I've found with the Moza Racing R9. Start with the pros, and the first thing is ultimately what any wheelbase should be judged by, and that is the quality of the force feedback. And it's outstanding. It really is. Um, as I say, I've done my best to put this wheelbase through its paces, tried it in a number of different sims, and uh, every sim I put it into, just almost immediately, I felt just outstanding levels of force feedback quality and uh, you know minor tweaks in the software was all I needed to really get this up to a very high level so uh, I mean the speed of the response the detail that being able to tell you know the road rumble from curbs from um, whatever numbness when you go into understeer and uh, just all the other forces you would look for from your force feedback steering wheel this one delivers <laughs> I, I, I gotta admit I didn't expect it I came into this review thinking that this would kind of win on fringe details you know it's got you know a uh, little bit more uh, peak torque than you might expect from some of its competitors lower price than its competitors so it's going to win there I thought it would be you know just uh, kind of an average impression of this once I got it in game but I'm really really impressed by it and um, yeah the force feedback quality I think is fantastic um, the second thing is the pit house software so um, this comes 
with the pit house software or rather you can just download it um, at your leisure from the moza racing website and it's great <laughs> it's really great um, i still say that sim commander allows more um, finer tuning of your force feedback but uh, as far as booting into the software, finding a profile that works for you, finding a style of car, you can select GT versus formula uh, versus cart, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, do some tweaking from there. And the GUI is great. It tells you with the sliders exactly what you're going to notice the difference in once you get in game and, you know, doing the percentage slider for the strength uh, that varies between GT and formula and being able to adjust that or adjust the amount of curbs you want all right there all easy to find in the software the pit house software i think is fantastic and another major major plus with this uh, moza racing r9 next one is the value and uh, this one was sent to me for review by moza so i didn't pay for it but definitely deserves some consideration in this what we're calling the entry level uh, direct drive market or the mid-tier uh, sim racing wheel market so 440 bucks for nine newton meters of torque um i don't know of any wheels possibly the vrs wheel but or wheelbase rather but there isn't much on the market that gets under the 50 dollar per newton meter uh price point whether or not that's a logical metric to use to uh, judge the value of a sim racing wheel i don't know but uh possibly it's the best metric i have right now so um yeah under 50 bucks per newton meter 440 bucks for nine newton meters of torque really a great value and comes with everything you need including being ready for the uh, quick release here uh, so no extra components to buy so yeah really a great value in a wheelbase and the next one I, I i can't say that i'm a huge fan of this sort of boxy style of wheelbase it's it's not a looker it's not a looker but at the same time it is compact so and it does have a little bit of styling you know the cutaways in the sides and you know moza written across the sides so um it's got a little bit of styling be nice to see some taper but um anyway i put, put it in the pro category because it is a smaller profile than what i'm used to with a competitor's wheelbase and it's also quiet it's also cool to the touch even after a lot of hard work so uh, the overall design uh, quite nice again not a huge fan of the looks but uh, in general it's small it's quiet and it's cool and finally uh, the quick release and the shaft here just strong as you could ever want and i'll get into this more when i do the gs steering wheel review um, but this shaft is just unbelievably strong it's thick as you can see i'll try and get a straight on shot there um but yeah relative to the uh, wheelbase itself it's, it's a very thick shaft and it just is solid as a rock like my whole rig moves before the wheel moves relative to the wheelbase so uh great to have that and definitely belongs in the pro category uh moving on now to the cons the first one is it's pc only so i'm doing a lot of gt7 driving these days and uh, this unfortunately will not work without a uh, third party box so um yeah if you're in the pc world obviously that's not going to affect you but if you're like me and you jump between console and pc unfortunately you're going to be limited here until you buy a third party box so pc only uh, drops into the cons category for me uh next one is kind of a business decision by moza and that was when this was released this r9 uh, obviously we know what this is meant to sort of take a chunk out of in the market uh, but there's no entry level wheel the the moza racing wheels are in the 500 dollars range and unfortunately despite the value of this having to attach a wheel that's worth more than the wheelbase and having no other option you can't put other wheels on here um well you might be able to but you wouldn't have buttons i suppose but uh, anyway um yeah, to have no other, uh, you know, cheaper wheel from Moza Racing as an entry level point, unfortunately dips it into the cons category. I think that's going to be a game changer for a lot of people who are shopping for these entry level direct drive or mid tier uh, sim racing wheels is that there is no entry level wheel from Moza Racing at this time. Uh, the next one, the e-stop is in the wrong place. So you guys probably saw that in the video introduction, um, but there's a 
a cable that plugs into the back of this unit and then it goes to a power brick from the power brick to a standard uh, electrical cord and the e-stop is right in the middle of that cord so um, unfortunately it's going to sit about two feet from your power bar or two feet from your wall whatever and uh, yeah it's hard to reach if you're going to put an e-stop on it's nice to have it close so um, I just think that e-stop's in the wrong location and relating to the power, another con is the power button in the back. In my opinion, it should be a latching, like depress it, it latches, that's power on. Depress it again, it retract or it extends, and that's power off. But this one, it just stays in the same position and just kind of clicks and feels cheap relative to uh, the rest of the unit. And the last one, guys, uh, there were included bolts and an Allen key with the wheelbase, which is great. I love when screws, bolts, nuts, uh, Allen keys, screwdrivers, whatever is all included so you don't have to go chasing around. Especially, like, I happen to have a garage with a lot of tools in it. But I'm sure a lot of people are going to set this up in their apartment. They might not have a full set of tools with spare M5, M6 bolts. Um, so shout out to Moza Racing for including that, but they didn't include washers. So all you get is these bolts of the correct length, but no washers. And it would have cost them pennies to throw in a few washers. So let's hope future editions include washers uh, with those bolts. But that's it for the pros and cons. Overall, I'm very, very impressed with this. As I say, ultimately, it's going to be judged by the quality of the force feedback, and it's it's really high, higher than I had expected for sure, and um, just a great design. Small and this strong shaft for the quick release uh, really just elevates this in my mind, and I'm so, so impressed with it. And uh, yeah, so now it's time to talk about the GS steering wheel, so I'm going to do that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.